Is it okay if I make a pile somewhere? You're good. You're I'm gonna get more stuff. You can. Oh, what's your price on him? Um, well, I bought him for 85. <laughs> How much for all of them? I'll just take both boxes. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Corey, and I just had the absolute best find at the flea market that I've ever had. I went up to Pittsburgh this week and uh, just to see the um, solar eclipse that was happening, and I stopped at this flea market for about two days, and on the second day, I hit the absolute jackpot. So let's go ahead and roll the footage. But you never can tell. I need a good show. Yeah, I'm ready for that one. And then there's Bobby's show. The, uh, I forgot what he put it all called. That one I didn't. That one, where I'm not doing it because he's going to give me a. Hey, Alabama. What's your price on this guy? Three bucks. Three? Okay, cool. What about your game here? A uh, buck. A dollar? Okay. I'll grab that. Oh, yes, please. And your cassettes were how much again? A uh, dollar. A dollar? Okay. Meatloaf. There you go. Just a ten. Another one? Oh, no, I did not. I did it, yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. Excuse me, sir. What's your price on this stuff? Uh, do a dollar on the turtle, a dollar on that. Okay. Three on that. Cool. It's like a little old camera. Do five on this. Okay, cool. So five, three, or five. So five. Yeah, ten total. Ten. All right. Is it okay if I make a pile somewhere? You're good. You're good. I'm gonna get more stuff. Wherever you can. Yep. All right. Thank you. Oh, I got these. I got these two books as well. I forgot about. Dollar a piece. Okay. What about your VHSs? Uh, these ones will be two a piece. There's a bunch more out. Not a bunch. There's a couple more out on the table out there. Those okay. will all be two a piece also. All right. I'll go check it out. So. Motley Crew. Let's see. Gotta check these for mold. Yep, they have mold. See. Some people, you can clean that off, but it's a, it's a little bit too much work for me, so. This one's good. How much do they eat? I think I'm ready here. Yeah. So you said ten for that stuff, two for these, two for those, and then two for these. Would you do twenty for everything? Okay, cool. Where is everybody at? Oh my gosh. It's the puzzle mecca. $2.50.
ten dollars. What's your price on this guy? Three dollars. Three? Cool. Kind of. Here you go. One, two, three. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take your time, Phil. Go and put it somewhere. Oh yeah, that's it's old. What's your price on this thing? 20? Yep. Does it come with this? Yeah. I think that goes with that one. Some other I have figures here. Yeah, a bunch of cool stuff, yeah. Got the one of the few uh, die cast action figures. Oh wow. This body's die cast. I don't what know. is he from? He's pretty old. This one is from, I think, 2018 or 2019. Oh, 2015, yes, yeah, it. Yeah, it was a Target exclusive. Oh, what's your price on him? Um, well, I bought him for 85. Oh, He's wow. complete. Um, we make an offer on him. Would you take half for that, dude? Yeah, 40. I would take 40 for it. Okay, I'll have to think about that. Okay. Um, well, let's say eight bucks because he might eight. Uh, yeah I, he's probably worth more than that can't yeah. find it yeah i think he, he might be a he could be upwards of a 40 dollar figure yeah i don't know most. i mean i do eight he's cool okay i don't know what it is but yeah they, there's only a few um you know die cast action figures that... i know that some toy lines they started off die cast and they went plastic okay like some sort of the, i'm guessing it was something like that well thank you i appreciate it yeah, thank you so much. i'll be back through in a bit Still collecting trolley stuff? Then? Yeah. Are you good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Still collecting. This. Good man. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. You still at Rory? Yeah, still there, man. Thirteen years going on now. Wow. Yeah. Is uh, Mark still there? Yeah, Pedroski's still there. He's still kicking it, man. Uh, five bucks for all that. Five. All right, cool. Which is good. That's what you want in the car industry. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. Thanks, you yeah. Want a bag, brother? I think that would right be great. Yeah. Too. Five each. Oh my gosh. Do I pay you for the... Yeah. Okay, I got one game. One game? Yeah. Five. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You can take them off for five bucks. All for five? Would you do two for these two? Sure. Okay, cool. He's a dollar. A dollar? Cool. I'll grab him. Sorry. Legs. Do you need a, a bag or anything? I'll just put them in here. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> What's the price on your game? <clears throat> Two. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
kids you get. What's your price on this little guy? A dollar. Cool. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> How are y'all doing this morning? Very good. All right, sir. Now, did you read all these books before you're disposing of them? Most of them. Oh my, <laughs> my wife probably read them all. <laughs> I try to keep up with her, but... Everybody's got their thing, huh? Yeah. I got four of them. Four of them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he'll probably be, probably be overpriced. That's why they're there. Yeah, probably. Sure. All right. Yeah, I'll take these bags. I'll have to come back here anymore. Right, I'll ask him about them. They're probably gonna be really pricey. What about your, these games? Three dollars each. Three? Yeah. Okay. How much for all of them? I'll just take both boxes. I don't know how many. Let me. All right, I'll count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's forty of them. So forty. There's forty in all of them. Yeah. Hundred sounds good. I do that. Twenty, forty, ten. Sounds good. You should come back here next week. Oh, okay. This is a whole box right here of GameCube games. Thank you so much. When that guy said three dollars a piece for each of these games, I about fell over. I couldn't believe it. That's all my money, but yeah, it's all. You can get that? I'll show you. What did he say about next week? <laughs> he said he's gonna have more next week. I'm not gonna be here. I'll show you, Rev. I kid you not. That's all the. That's some good stuff, though. There's some really good games in here, like oh. Indiana Jones, Staff of Kings. Oh. Look at this. Oh my god. Freaking black label Paper Mario. Geist. Yep, yeah, I think Paper Mario is the best one in here. Aquaman, Soul Calibur, Virtual Quest. You're telling me you pay dirty Oh my gosh, I need to see these. Yeah, yeah, I paid, I I paid $3 a piece for these. Super Smash Brothers Melee, Super Mario Strikers. And it's like, this, this is a $60 game. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's insane. Did that guy have that on display? Yeah, it's all on his tail. Aquaman. I mean, Aquaman's uh, somewhat rare. Spawn Armageddon. The only one that... Uh, I think most of them are complete. I mean, Paper Mario is complete. Jesus. The disc looks pretty good. Oh my God, can't believe it. I need to go to an ATM. If I didn't record that, no one's going to believe it. 
So it turned out to be a really awesome trip there to Pittsburgh. Um, even though I got sick, as you can tell by my voice, and my car actually broke down, and I was stuck there for like four or five extra days, um, we got that amazing find at the flea market, and of course seeing the solar eclipse made it all worth it. So um, I'm really excited. Let's take a look at everything we got. The weather was pretty awful the first day at the flea market, but I did pick up this wide assortment of interesting items. Let's take a look at it all. So the first thing we picked up was this 1968 vinyl Wile E. Coyote figure. Um, I bought one of these before and um, unfortunately that one broke because I kept it out in the cold. Um, their bodies are made of vinyl and the limbs are all rubber or some kind of like soft rubber um, as you can see there. But uh, if you look on the back of his head, 1968, um, these are really collectible, really cool figures. Um, I think I could list it for about $30. So a uh, cool find for just three bucks. From the same seller, I got this game, Force 21 for Game Boy Color. Um, looks like it has some bite marks right there. I don't know what that is, but uh, not a valuable game at all. Probably just worth like three, four dollars. Only paid a dollar, so not bad. So if I'm ever having a slow day at the flea market, I'll pick up cassettes if they're cheap enough. You can't really sell them on eBay, but they are good trade-in items. I always go for like the popular ones like uh, the Eagles right there. We got Meatloaf, Earth, Wind & Fire, just common bands, Aerosmith of course, and then Mr. Mister. Next I picked up this uh, 2004 Ninja Turtle um, with scuba diving gear, which I thought was really cool. I paid just $2 for him. Um, as you can see, he even has some accessories like his mask, uh, well, it looks like that's pretty much it. He does come with flippers and stuff, but um, this one unfortunately did not. I'm going to list it for about $20, so uh, should get a pretty good profit there. So I also picked up this 2011 Jax Pokemon figure. I'm not sure which one this is. It looks like one of the starters from uh, one of the uh, later generations. Um, I have a whole bunch of these Jax Pokemons, and I'm just kind of building up a massive lot to list on eBay, so I'll just throw that one in there with them. From the same seller, I also got these two classic Dracula and Frankenstein books. Uh, I believe they're Watermill Classic, complete and unabridged. Um, I'm not going to sell these on eBay, just going to trade them in at a local bookstore uh, for some store credit. So uh, I had to pick those up for just a dollar each. There was a lot of Ninja Turtles VHS at the flea market. Unfortunately, just these three were the only ones that didn't have mold on the tapes. Um, well, these aren't necessarily all that valuable alone. What I usually do is I'll just buy them in lots. Um, I actually have another one already at home, so um, I can just pair all these together and list them for uh, $20, or I can just keep saving them up and then list them all for a lot more money later down the road. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. It's for this same reason that I picked up barbed wire on VHS. Um, not a valuable VHS at all, but I just so happened to have Raw Justice, which is another Pamela Anderson VHS listed on eBay currently, so together I can... Um, probably get about $13 out of these two VHS, which is great because I only pay two for this one, and this one I found in the bins for basically 10 cents. Not a bad deal at all. I also picked up this CD from the same seller. Um, no idea what it was, but I uh, thought it would be a good trade-in item. So just as a general rule when you're dealing with CDs, pretty much anything parental advisory is worth taking a risk on if you can get it for cheap. Um, so that's what I did here. Unfortunately, this was not like some <laughs> $15 CD or anything, but it is going to be good for trading in. I also picked up this PlayStation 3 uh, motion controller gun. I thought it was really cool. I don't see these very often, but um, they're easy sells, um, worth about $30. Cool thing is the uh, stock actually changes to fit the uh, whoever's playing. Um, I haven't tested it or anything, but it should work just fine. I've been trying really hard lately to learn more about cameras, especially vintage ones, because I see them all the time at the flea market. Um, when I saw this one, I had to pick it up. An old Polaroid, it still works, which is cool. Well, there it goes. I don't have any uh, film, unfortunately, but um, really great condition. As you can see, the case is super vintage. Got a lot of uh, little accessories in there, including the, uh, the uh, little light thing there. These don't work very well indoors. You need sunlight unless you have one of these. So that was a cool addition. So from my research, it seems that these are sort of difficult to uh, date how old they are. But um, I could tell just from like the photos and the haircuts and stuff that this one is definitely from the 70s. Plus the leather just smells 70s. So uh, it's a pretty easy thing to find out. Um, you can open these though, which is a good idea to test it for um, any kind of uh, flaws it might have. 
But uh, this one looks like it's in really great shape. I think I can get maybe $25 to $30 out of it, which is perfect. I paid just five for it. Easily my favorite find of the day was this Score With Me Pac-Man plush. Very old, probably from the 80s. Um, I think it's worth about $18 in this condition. Uh, it doesn't have the original tags or anything like that, but just from ones I've seen online in comparison. Really cool, I got from that seller for a great price. From the same seller, I picked up this little Mario Amiibo. Thought it was really cool, he, I just paid a dollar for it. Um, I didn't show that on camera because my camera actually died at that point. But uh, the best thing is I already have his pair, which is uh, kind of cool. So I think I'll just keep these for now. So before I get into the second day's flea market finds, I just want to show off all this stuff here that I picked up as well that I did not record. Uh, unfortunately, my camera died. I used the uh, InstaGo 3, which is a great little camera. But the problem is whenever you untouch the pod, which is what I do, and I carry this around, it only has about an hour of battery life. So uh, it runs out quite a bit. So I'm not able to record everything. But I did also pick up the stuff, paid a dollar each for all the figures. Um, I think I paid a dollar for this little Ghostbusters guy here. And then I paid five for this, uh, um, I think it's Harry Potter year 2000 maybe, um, Dragon. Does it say it at the bottom? Yeah, 2001. So I guess it's from the first movie. Um, but it's a really high quality piece. I can't remember how much it is or what it's worth or anything. So uh, I'll just show a comp up on the screen. Um, but yeah, I paid five dollars for this Dragon. I'm going to sell that on eBay for sure. While all these figures here aren't really worth selling on eBay alone, um, I see them so often that I just buy them whenever I see them and then I just lot them together. I already have two other um, of these little bendable superhero figures that I can put with these two and I should be able to sell those for all for like a, a pretty good amount. Um, these two are just like two little uh, sci-fi figures. I think this is that old Robocop ripoff toy. You guys saw me a few videos ago buy a 12 inch version of that one. Um, I think this is just like a cheapo Power Rangers toy. Um, I'll probably just trade that in, trade both of these in. Um, now, you guys may remember a few weeks ago, I bought this little X-Men playset. And um, it was the Lady Liberty playset, and the uh, figures were sold separately. But the funny thing is, at the flea market Saturday, I actually found the uh, Wolverine that is straight up on the box of this set. So uh, whenever I list this, I can just list both of these um x-men figures with it so uh that's why i decided to pick those up so before we get into the amazing gamecube lot that i bought at the end of the day um let's talk about all this random stuff the first thing i picked up on the second day was this really big gundam figure now i absolutely fell in love with this thing i love the look of it the colors the design everything for some reason where i live i never see this stuff like i've been doing this for years and i have never even come across a single one of these um they're really cool they look great on a shelf um, I ended up paying $20 for it, which is a lot because they're only worth, turns out, about $25 in this condition or about $35 if it was um, a little bit more complete. It's missing some parts, like a little piece there on the head. Uh, it's missing the second antenna there uh, on the back or on the bottom here. It's missing the flap that goes right there. Uh, missing a weapon here and a shield. And it might even be missing some other parts, but other than that, it it's pretty great condition actually um i think i'm just going to keep this though because it looks awesome on the shelf i don't really want to sell it because i'll lose money <laughs> i might i might one day but uh first i want to get a little time out of it me and the seller were kind of confused what this uh little die cast guy was all about um i did end up looking it up when i finally got home we paid eight dollars for it turns out it's only worth maybe fifteen dollars in this condition um, which is pretty rough it is called Dr. Scarab from Bionic 6, which I guess is some TV show maybe. I'm not really sure, but um, just a cool figure and I felt like taking a chance on him. I'm not going to be making any money, unfortunately, once I sell him. Sometimes you just got to take a risk. You might win, you might lose. So thankfully, by the time I reached the second table, my luck started to change. I picked up this C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia book set. It's from this 1970s, um, I think it's the Collier edition. It's worth about $30, and this set is just in fantastic condition. Um, great find, I paid five bucks for all this, 30 on this, and um, I think this DVD I can probably get a couple dollars in trade. And then we got this little game here, which is called, I can barely read the text, Zoo Zoo 2. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty cheapy game like most DS games, but um, I'll just trade these two in and that that should pay for um, the whole lot that I bought and then the $30 here is pure profit. 
Grand Theft Auto Vice City is not necessarily a valuable game, but um, the reason I bought it was because not only is the game itself in like mint condition, but I have a place where I trade in all my games and they will pay an absolute ton for Vice City because it's a really good seller there. Um, I can probably trade this in and get about $10 for it. So I paid five and um, couldn't pass it up. Speaking of games I couldn't pass up, I picked up Matrix Path of Neo on PS2 for $2. Those of you who collect games, you know this is a valuable game and always worth grabbing. Um, it is complete in great condition, easy $25 all day, a game that every PS2 collector wants. And then we picked up Gravel for PS4. This is a super hard racing game. I remember playing it a while back. Um, it's complete, which is cool. I think it's currently going for about $15, $16. Only paid a dollar for it, crazy good find. Here's some more stuff I picked up simply to trade in. Obviously this stuff is not worth selling on eBay, but uh, we got this Green Day Warning CD, ZZ Top. All these CDs are there, they're complete, and they're in pretty good condition, even though this one does probably need a new case. But uh, this is Godsmack, Faceless, and Daft Punk. And then I always pick up sci-fi or fantasy paperbacks if they're cheap because um, you trade them in at a bookstore and get trade credit and buy things that are easier to sell on eBay. So I always pick up Halo figures whenever I see them. So when I saw this Elite, I had to jump on him. Um, you can tell from his pose that he uh, came with the uh, Banshee vehicle, which unfortunately I do not have. But um, what's cool is a lot of people do have the Banshee, but they do not have the Pilot, which we have here. So I think I could probably sell this guy for about $15 on eBay. Only paid a dollar for him. I also picked up this Doc Ock figure. Um, just paid a dollar for him. It's not in the best condition. Uh, as you can see on the bottom, both of his like pincers are kind of broken. But uh, the top ones are all there and intact. Um, I think it dates to about 2004. Doc Ock is one of the most popular um, characters from all of Marvel Spider-Man universe. So it's really cool to find this. Um, I'm definitely just going to trade it in probably. I don't think it'll go for all that much on eBay. But um, I'll show a comp up on the screen of what I think I can get out of it. In all my years going to flea markets, I've never gotten a lot of games as good as this one. And in fact, I've never even gotten a single item as good as this uh, game lot was. Um, these are all GameCube games in this box, and we're going to go through all of them. I'm not going to pretend like I know the true value of all of them currently, um, but I am going to show up comps on the screen um, after I show each game. Um, we're going to have to go through these kind of quick because <laughs> I realize this video is getting kind of long. Um, so first up, we just got this random Nintendo DS game that was in the box for some reason. Uh, Smackdown vs. Raw 2010. It is complete, which is cool. And uh, if you look right there, or right there, <laughs> there's a comp for what it's currently going for. You gotta remember, I paid $3, or a little bit less than $3 for each of these GameCube games. Um, I didn't actually check to see which ones, if the games were actually complete or not. I only looked on like a couple of them before I bought the entire box. Um, it's just one of those things where even the artwork alone for most of these games is going to be worth three dollars so uh so the first game we got is legends of wrestling um it is complete which is cool the disc is not in the best condition um has some scratches and stuff but it's worth picking up gamecube games even shovelware ones um because pretty much even the worst games the cheapest games are still going to be worth at least fifteen dollars i mean the console is just so desirable but as i mentioned I did not check the condition of all of these games when I bought them, and you'll see what happened as a result of that. <laughs> um, obviously, we got two games here, and as you guys know, whenever you get two games of the same game in a single collection, it's because one of them doesn't work, and that's exactly what happened here. Um, although this one right here is complete and in pretty good condition, this one unfortunately just has the manual is missing the manual, and the disc has a crack in it. Matter of fact, it has two cracks in it, which you can see there. So this game definitely will not work. But um, thankfully, we can even sell the manual, or we can sell the uh, the case and the artwork and everything, and still do pretty good on that one. And the other game that didn't work is Soul Calibur 2. Also had a crack in it, unfortunately, which you can see there. Um, I'm not even going to risk putting these in my system if they have a crack in it because uh, they could explode, cause some serious damage. So I'm not going to risk it. Up next is Second Sight missing the manual but it does have the insert now all the games in this lot um, have scratches none of them are perfect except well one of them is basically near mint and then one of them is sealed but um we're gonna have to probably get most of these games resurfaced 
Um, I haven't even tested them all out yet, just a few of them. And they did work, the ones I did test, but um, we're gonna get them resurfaced anyway, just to be on the safe side. Um, then we have Beautiful Joe here, also complete. The disc on this one is pretty scratched, so we're gonna have to get that one resurfaced. Another shovelware game, but still worth picking up. Scorpion King, it's missing the manual, but uh, good find. This is probably the most common GameCube game. I find this probably once every couple months. Uh, this is actually a pretty nice copy. It's complete and everything, but you will notice that there's some cracking there on the disc artwork. Um, this can happen if these GameCube games are stored in like really humid environments. Um, these cracks can go like all over this disc. Um, it doesn't really affect anything as far as I know, but um, some people care about it, others don't. Um, I personally don't care if it's just something minor like that, but you do have to let your buyers know if you intend to sell them. Next we got Torok Evolution, also complete. Super Mario Strikers, also complete. And then one of the heavy hitters, Super Smash Bros. Melee, such a fun game. I remember playing it as a kid. I was even in a tournament with it at one point. Um, I wasn't very good, but uh, I've gotten a lot better since then. Uh, the disc needs to be resurfaced, but um, should play just fine. It's all surface scratches. Next we got Dead to Rights. This game looks like it has a little bit of fading from uh, sun damage. And it's missing the manual, but um, still a cool find. A really fun game. And then we have Geist, one of my favorite games in the lot. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have the manual, but the artwork and everything's there. The disc is in okay condition, so uh, I'm happy. I played this game so much as a kid. It's a shovelware game, probably the cheapest game on the entire system. All-Star Baseball 2002. Um, the disc does not look to be in that good a condition, but I think this is probably the cheapest game, so... No worries. Another really great Matrix game, Enter the Matrix. This is a two-disker. Um, has the manual, has both disc. Nice find. Next up is Aquaman. Um, I have never found this game before in the wild. Um, I've seen it at stores and stuff. Um, it's complete like all the other games. Man, I used to love Tony Hawk's Underground. I have so many fond memories of this game. Although I think the third one is probably the best one. Hands down, the rarest and the most valuable game in the whole lot. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I have never found this game in the wild in all my years of uh, reselling and collecting. Um, amazing find. In fact, a lot of game stores don't even have this in stock. So uh, it's a super desirable game. It's a black label. It's complete. The disc is in good condition. This is one of the few games in the slot that I'm definitely going to keep for myself because I know I'll never find it this cheap ever again. Next we have Tie 2. And when I originally saw this, I uh, thought it was a reseal because you notice there's no like Y folds on there. However, there is an EA Electronic Arts stamp right there on the edge. And there's this uh, little um, little magnet thing there. So um, this is an actual authentic sealed GameCube game. A super rare find. Unfortunately, it's just Tie 2, which is not a really uh, valuable game, but uh, still cool to see. Goblin Commander, one of my most nostalgic games. I used to rent this from Blockbuster constantly. For some reason, I would never buy it. <laughs> but the funny thing is, this is actually a Blockbuster copy, so uh, who knows, this might be the one that I always rented. And the disc is actually in really good condition. It does not need to be resurfaced, um, although it does need a manual. Last but not at least, another one of the more valuable games in the lot, Spawn Armageddon. Case is in fantastic condition. Um, it's complete, has the manual and everything, and the disc is in pretty good condition as well. So yeah, that's it for all the GameCube games. Insane lot. I'm never gonna find one this good in the wild, at least at these prices. Um, even buying it blind like I did, I am super happy that I got this. I bought all these games here with these, paid 100 for everything. They're originally about 120. Um, he cut off $20, which thank God he did because turns out, I did not get as lucky with these games as I did with these, and you'll see why. So what I have on the top here are the four most valuable games in the lot, but unfortunately, I didn't check. Very rookie mistake. And uh, in Indiana Jones and Staff of the Kings, we had Indiana Jones, the original Adventures Lego. Um, it was a real bummer to uh, find this, and the disc wasn't even in that good a condition. But um, good thing is I can just buy the disc later on, and I'll have a complete copy, which is cool. Um, then Tokyo Extreme Racer 3, unfortunately, was not in there. Instead, it was some kind of like horror sounds disc, which I've actually bought a lot of these horror sounds discs, and they can be, uh, they can do okay, um, but uh, this one's in terrible condition. But once again, we do have the box at least. Next is Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, or should I say Kingdom Hearts for PS2. But thankfully, Micro Machines V3 was in there, 
and it's in great condition. So a complete PS1 game. I love City of Heroes as a kid. Um, played a lot of this game, but unfortunately it's not in there. Instead, I'll be listening to the Backstreet Boys. I've been a big pool fan my entire life, but um, fortunately I can't play it because I have something better. Vigilante 8 Second Offense. Now, I was surprised to see this in here. Um, these black discs, they always look a lot worse than they are. Um, PS1 games will work. I've literally seen PS1 games look like they've been run over by a truck and they still work. So I'm not worried at all. Um, all the PlayStation 1 games should be good. But that was a cool find. Here's just a couple cheapy items. No games were in here. So uh, I'm probably just going to either throw these away or try to trade them in. Up next is Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. It is in there. Um, not in the best condition. Um, and it's missing the manual. But uh, not a valuable game anyways. Grand Theft Auto 4 for PC. Unfortunately, it's missing a disc. Um, it does have the poster. Um, I don't think I can sell this really. So I'll probably just end up throwing this away. This was another surprising find. Within this LEGO Universe DVD box was LEGO Island 2. And I can't remember how much this game goes for. Um, I'll pop it up on the screen real quick. The disc doesn't look too bad, just some surface scratches. That'll all come right out once you resurface. I was really excited about getting Spider-Man 3 for PS2, but unfortunately it's the movie, not the game. Next up we got Jam Pack Volume 13, just some demo disc, it is in there which is cool. And The Incredibles for PS2, but unfortunately it's the movie, not the game. Then we got Skyrim, the Legendary Edition. This is a good trade-in item, so not too bad on that one. Then we got Secret Weapons Over Normandy for PS2, also in there, although it does have some top scratches. Should work fine because the disc looks good. Last but not at least, we got the Elder Scrolls Online. It is in there. Um, I'm not sure what this is going for. I'll probably just trade it in. So in closing, there's two takeaways I want you guys to get from this video. Um, number one, if you're at a flea market, you ever find something really, really cool like I did with this game lot, um, just take your time. Look at all the discs if you have to, if it's a, if it's a game lot or uh, whatever. And if it's a really rare item, um, just examine it as close as possible to try to get the best idea of what you're paying for. You guys saw what happened, and I lost a lot of money because I didn't do that. Um, even though I'll be perfectly fine because, I mean, I got that insane GameCube lot. Um, which brings me to the next thing. Stay consistent. Keep going to flea markets. This stuff is still out there. I mean, you can find crazy games like this. You guys saw what I did. Um, it has nothing to do with knowledge or skill or anything. It's just being in the right place at the right time. It's pure luck. If you keep doing it, eventually you'll get lucky. You'll find even a better lot than what I got. Um, you, you'll ne you can't imagine the kind of stuff that's out there. Um, just stay at, stay at it. Keep trying. And um, good luck. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.